yeah, this is where we came in. What was that? Crew dormitory. Ironically referred to as glory holes. No, not going to go there. What's up, guys? John here from the Killer Bits, and today, yes, we are taking a journey aboard the ill-fated Titanic as we join Titanic Honor and Glory from Vintage Digital Revival. And this is... Well, I hate to say it's a walk-in sim, but it, it is a first-person exploration game. Well, actually, this is just the demo, as you can see here, demo version 3.1. And where the full game is going to be slightly more murder mystery to it, this is, well, just a kind of, I'd say almost vertical slice of the game. We will go into the settings. So this is actually being done in the Unreal Engine 4. And... There are elements of this that are very pretty. The developers are going all out on trying to create a, you know, realistically accurate representation of the Titanic. Uh, we've got multiple sliders for pretty much everything. Now, video, as I said, it is being done in Unreal. And I've had to do a lot of tinkering to get a reasonable quality picture alongside trying to get a pretty stable frame rate. So I'm purposely doing... 2k video so I can get the the quality for you but it is going to be downscaled and I've you know turned anti-aliasing and all this down because it's a demo it's pretty unoptimized it is a resource hog and if you want to check it out for yourself bear in mind you you're going to be doing some tinkering with the visual settings to actually get get it running nicely i mean i am going to be suffering some pretty heinous screen tearing because i've turned vsync off again just to try and save a couple of frames but that is for your benefit guys but yes it is very pretty in places but be aware it is a resource hog and if you're going to try it out for yourself also i advise bumping up the field of view i think it starts off at about 80. So bump that up to at least 90 odd, maybe 100, something like that. Uh, camera, we can change the sensitivity. I'm actually going to be playing on gamepad just for kind of smoother movement. Again, just to kind of make it look a little better than, you know, very quick, jerky, mouse driven head movements. And there's our keys. So it's WASDA to move if you're using keyboard, left shift or left trigger if you're on the gamepad. And. If we close this out and have a look at the information on the demo, as you can see there, shift while walking, press I to toggle info boxes, M for the music on and off, and press P to enter the pause menu, essentially. So once again, as I said, this is a demo, and I think where the, the main game is obviously about the journey from Southampton to New York, that doesn't quite make it. And that is actually more of a murder mystery. This is essentially like a, as I say, vertical slice. We get to see about 6% of the ship. In the, the full game, you can supposedly wander around the entire ship. And here we are, April 1st, 1912, in the Belfast shipyards. First the train from London to Liverpool, then a short trip to the docks where I boarded the ferry to Dublin, then the long train ride through Ireland to Belfast. Not a bad ride, but excruciatingly long. Check in at the guest house in the town proper, quick supper, quick sleep, quick breakfast, and a hop on the local train here to the Holland and Wolf shipyard. Fortunately, it was punctual. I was worried about being tardy for being three hours early. My darling Claire always said to me, Robin, you better get out of the house right now and go be useful for someone. She always did lovingly encourage me to show up for work early and give my best effort. So obviously this isn't the main character for the game. I think the main character for the, the full game is somebody called Robert Morgan. And the, the premise behind them is they're wrongfully accused of a crime and they kind of smuggle themselves aboard the Titanic in order to catch the criminals. Titanic is likely no different from the Olympic. They're structurally identical. The Olympic underwent these trials months ago, so this should be a simple repeat. I board, observe her during the sea trials, vote aye or nay on her certification, and then I ride her back to Southampton. 
Come on, Robin, you can't mess this one up, as Claire always told me. So like I said, the, the main character in the game is somebody called Robert, and obviously we're playing somebody called Robin, who's obviously here to assess the Titanic. And yes, this is as slow as we move. So I can, you know, press shift or left trigger, and this is us running, apparently. It is uh, the early 20th century, uh, where men were men and didn't run. The opportunity to board the Titanic advance of the tribes. This gives me a bit of time to really admire the beauty of the ship before I have to scrutinize every last aspect of her functionality. So obviously Robin is here to check the seaworthiness of the Titanic and has obviously already seen the Olympic, which was the sister ship. And there, there's a lot of kind of... This is very much a demo. There's lots of stuff that is gated off, so if we quote-unquote run in this direction you can see there's some uh, ladders knocked over so we're not going to go any further along that side of the the dock and if we run back as I say quote-unquote run there's a lot of this is going to be as I say the the main game supposedly is going to have this ability to kind of free roam around the ship and apparently there's also going to be sections of... I better find my way aboard. But I suppose there isn't reason for too much haste. No one else has even arrived yet, it seems. Plenty of time to explore, if I desire. So, as I was saying, apparently the full game will have sections of Southampton you can wander around, as well as uh, they're planning sections of Belfast and uh, Cherbourg in France, New York City and all that sort of thing. So... I think the the developers are planning a game with a fairly significant I'm quite scope. By the amount of confidence the industry is placing into this ship, she's not even certified yet, and her first ticketed voyage is just a week from now. No room for failure on these trials, I suppose. It's like getting dressed up for a date when you haven't even begun your courtship yet. How do you know if you'll be rejected or not? I learned that one the hard way. So you can probably see here there is some kind of stuttering as I turn around. Um, what's Belfast Lock is beautiful. With the hills around it and the morning fog, it reminds me of what I always imagined Puget Sound would be like. A man sure can make a living out in Seattle, if he can hold off the play. So in the kind of ten minutes or so I've spent with the game so far, Robin seems obsessed with Seattle for some reason. Uh, but anyway, as you can see here, here is the ship. And as I was saying, that there is some stuttering when you kind of suddenly turn around. Um, this is definitely not optimised. Um, also, in the main game, as I said, they're looking to have kind of full exploration. But because of the, the way they're approaching it, that it's going to have this kind of story mode of, you know... I see they're doing all they can to extend my travel time. How do I find my way through this mess? So as I was about to say, uh, there is, at least in this demo version, a lot of kind of funneling of the character. So lots of stuff that is boxed off. Obviously, they, they said there's about 6% of the ship available to explore. So even to get onto the ship, they're boxing your, your way on off. So obviously, we're not going to get across this gangway. So close to the aft gangway. So we have to find uh, another route in. And also I notice slightly weird things like some of the train tra rail tracks we can't cross, but if we just shuffle across, there you go. There's obviously a gap there, but there isn't here. I'm literally banging up against, yeah. So, yes, very much a demo. So, take everything here with, you know, a, a word of caution. That it's it's not brilliant. Um, but wandering around the docks isn't the the main focus of the game. Uh, obviously, we want to get onto the ship. So, as I was saying, the the story mode. For the game is going to have this kind of like murder mystery element with the main character accused of crime 
and has to infiltrate the ship, uh, kind of passing himself off as one of the crew. Uh, which direction was it? Uh, yeah, because there's a lot of dead ends in that. We can't go that way. We need to go through this gap here. And in the kind of five day journey across, you kind of interview, um, you know, passengers and crew and trying to discover who the real criminals are. I don't know whether it is an actual murder mystery, but it's it's a, a mystery you have to solve. And then there's a time limit to actually catch capture the criminals. The carriage arrangement. It really stretched my cognitive abilities. People simply aren't stimulated enough these days. Claire tells me that every night. Since the aft gangway is blocked, I'll board here through the first class. Mind the step. So yes, we have to capture the criminals during the sinking of the ship. So essentially we've got like two hours, 40 minutes to capture them. Uh, obviously this is all in the main game because this is just very much a work in progress and has been a work in progress for a while now. So here we go. Welcome to Demo 3. Press I to toggle the info on and off. T to go black and white, which we can do just so. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do this in black and white, but you can do if you want. Whether you want to do kind of your own um, machinima and want to do black, um, flashback modes, then you turn on the uh, black and white. So through these doors, the passengers from the tenders at Sherberg and Queenstown would board the... I think that's supposed to say Titanic. There we go. Others would disembark at these locations. First class Sherberg tender Nomadic is the last remaining ship built for the White Star Line and is currently preserved in Belfast, Northern Ireland. So yes, you, you probably saw a bit of stuttering there. As I say, I am suffering some god awful screen tearing, but it's all for your benefit. So here we go. D deck reception. Once again, it you can, can toggle this on and off. So this is just for kind of additional information. And this is where I say it can be quite pretty. So th once again, this is blown up to 2K. You can also go up to 4K, um, though the frame rate drops to about 30 frames a second I for that. I especially so. commend them for modifying the bulkhead. I never cared much for what was on the Olympic. There we go. And we can see the dining places are all set. So um, it's part murder mystery, part historically accurate reconstruction of the ship. So we can see, you know, all the all the detail that's been put in. I don't know whether there's a crouch or anything. We can't look down to actually see if the the, the menus are, you know, accurate. Then again, I wouldn't know whether the the, the menus were accurate or not. But I was, I was saying certain areas of the ship are boxed off. We can't go past these chairs and we can't go past that bit there because there's obviously a trolley in the way and if we try to go any further this way, we have a way between the, the chairs. Many of the tables are already set. There will be a fine banquet here for company and partner representatives, myself included, along with the one and only paying passenger joining us on our way to Southampton this evening. So there we go. We're not going to be able to get access to the entire ship, uh, but this is just meant to give uh, prospective players a slight taste of what there is in store. Uh, and if we head further up, obviously this is kind of like the dining area and that, we can venture further up into the ship. The purser's office. Inside this office is with the ship's safe where passengers can have their valuables stored. So that's the sort of thing I would imagine would come into effect in the kind of story mode. You know, you're looking for a clue that maybe somebody's hidden in a safe. Try and infiltrate the crew, try and get access to the safe to actually see that. Passengers could purchase wireless telegrams. Again, telegrams, you can maybe intercept information that way. And we've got and pieces of information like please consider contributing uh, to enjoy the early demo of titanic honor and glory so this game has been in the works for a while now uh, the developers um 
well, honestly, I don't know how long it's been in the works. Uh, this is demo three, um, and I did some digging around. There's, they had an Indiegogo about two and a half years ago now. Well, early part of uh, 2015, and they were looking for 250,000 um, to kind of fund phase three of uh, the project. They'd evidently done earlier Kickstarting, uh, Kickstarter or crowdfunding or something to kind of get the initial game off the ground. Can't go into anybody's rooms, unfortunately. Um, but they wanted, as I say, quarter million back in 2015. Nope, not going to get into any of these rooms. But unfortunately, they only managed to uh, raise, uh, what was it, 60,000? So they were significantly short of their, their target. We can see all the names. Uh, Elmer and Juliet Taylor introduced paper food containers to England. So there, there's little nuggets of information like this. Director of paper cup for manufacturer. So the the team behind this, uh, Vintage Digital, is made up of like th principally three team members. Um, but for a project like this, obviously they are leaning heavily on, you know, historians and they're, they're trying to make this as historically accurate as possible. And from what I've seen so far, it all looks pretty accurate, but then again, I'm not an expert, so I wouldn't be able to tell. I wonder if the barber will be on board for the run to Southampton. Lord knows I should fancy a shave after my journey here. Speaking of barbers, I'm quite glad old Harry is there to look after Claire while I'm away. They always were fond of each other, and when my son was born, Harry was particularly fond of him, never missing a birthday. See, this is the kind of friend a man really needs. His presence seems to even alleviate her hysteria condition. Uh, excuse me, mate. I think your best friend's banging your wife. I think that's what you, we're, we're basically led to believe there. So, Chief Steward's office. So, we're into the kind of crew quarters here. Crew only to second class promenade. Um, so, yeah, it it all seems fairly accurate. I mean, utilising Unreal, it's it's kind of giving the whole ship a nice look and that. Uh, Frederick and Jane Hoyt, noted yachtsman and lace importer. Um, this is the surgery. The ship's, ship's surgeon. Uh, ship surgeon, Dr. William O'Loughlin. As I said, I'm, I have no background in, you know, the the actual history behind the Titanic, so I wouldn't know whether any of these names are actually familiar or not. Um, so, but as I say, as a, a representation of, you know, a early 20th century ocean liner, it certainly looks pretty accurate. And as I said, there, there's, there are nice touches, like the, the texture is fairly nice. We can go all the way up. Not so much that wall, but I think there's other walls that are painted walls. You can actually see the brush strokes. So where, where are we now? Café Parisien. This café is designed to resemble a patio café in France, complete with artificial vines and windows open to the sea air. Passengers could relax and order tea and pastries, served by authentic French waiters, who were indeed actually Italian. really does remind you of Paris, though accepting the smell of overflown sewage. Wonderful memories are coming back to me of that city. So he likes smelling the shit in Paris, does he? Okay. Second class promenade. I don't think we can get there at all. Uh, that is definitely a section of the ship that is boxed off. But it looks all very pretty. Though my main bugbear in this is obviously the frame rate. I'm I'm currently at the slowest speed. I mean, I could run and speed up a bit. Would have its tables but... already set. Mr. Gotti hasn't even boarded yet. Oh well, top marks for presentation. So yes, the the stuttering in that. Also, 
there there is the fact that this game is actually available well this demo in fact is available on uh, vr as well so it's going to be available for both um rift and vive so obviously the 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 VR demo, I don't know whether they're, they're scaling down the quality of the assets, the textures and things like that, because the the changes in frame rate would definitely make people vomit because, I mean, I'm, I'm getting a bit queasy just, you know, if I did, did, did this. I'm guessing you as an audience are probably getting a bit queasy. This is just in regular mode. So VR, I'm guessing they, they're probably going to have to dial it back a fair bit to get a stable frame rate but also try and keep some of the the quality of it all can we actually see who's in the journal friday 12th of april 1912 and i can't make out any of the names there's no kind of zoom button or anything like that so i can't zoom in anything crouch to look at under stuff or anything like that so with this kind of game especially being kind of exploration that that would be the kind of touches i i know a lot of people would oh, want wood detailing here it's absolutely perplexing now that's a craft i can really respect lovely wood yeah we can see the the grain in the wood when younger i used to cut wood for the poor folks two streets over my neighbors started calling me robin wood they always laughed, uh, but I don't know why. I wore that title proudly. He likes rubbing his wood, does he? Restaurant reception, air room. Uh, the text just going outside the, the, the regions of the box. Known as the palm room by passengers, they enjoyed after dinner music from the ship's trio and had coffee and refreshments. So I was saying it'd be nice to be able to, you know, crouch down and see pictures like that especially being an exploration game or at least be able to pick it up and you know examine it so again i don't know whether they're gonna give you access to that in you know the full game or if it's going to be very kind of uh kind of gated cabins upon cabins upon cabins yeah there's lots of cabins Miss Lucille Carter and Master William Carter, the second daughter and son of the Carters. Meet the Carters, owned the car in the cargo hold. Okay, so there's. We can maybe go and have a look for a car in the cargo hold? I don't know. So, this is about the limit of where I got to. Um, as I said, I explored like about 10 minutes worth. A lot of it was trying to dial in graphical settings to actually see if I could get a decent frame rate as well as try and protect, uh, maintain some of the, the visual quality and let's just run through the rest of the corridors what's back here ladies 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 so from what, what I've read um, the game will have multiple modes so the story mode I've already spoken about can't have a peek in there what's in here jump jump no no can't see b deck boarding entrance oh it's, it's just the the way in from the b deck right okay um so i said about the story mode the kind of the murder mystery element there's also going to be a tour mode which essentially is just like a free roam mode where you can explore the ship they're looking to have a um simulator mode lifts are out of order that's fine Real men don't take lifts. Lifts are for women, Claire says. Robin, take the long way up. Okay, well, we're going to take the long way up. Um, so, yeah, simulator mode, which supposedly will allow you to kind of, you know, sail the Titanic and potentially other ships in the, the, the White uh, Star Liner fleet. I shouldn't venture too far on deck. The Board of Trade members may board soon, and I'm expected to meet them. No, we can't go any higher. No, that's it. That's the limit we can go. Right, so we, we've seen some of first class. I think we need to go down below decks to see what second class is. Who's this? This is the sort of thing I'd imagine they'd maybe put in not so much historically accurate pictures, but maybe, you know, 
high level Kickstarter, well, Indiegogo backers would get their, their portrait on, on the ship or something like that. Uh, we can't quite go into little side rooms either. No. So, going down. So, where did I get to? I said there was the uh, simulator mode, and also they're looking to have, I, I did write this down, a multiplayer mode as well. Oh, we can go. This is Scotland Road, named after the street in Liverpool where many of the crew of the early White Star Line ships live. Scotland Road is the main access passage for crew and third class passengers. So we're going to have to go that way in a minute. Uh, this way to Scotland Road. So multiplayer mode will supposedly, well it's, it's still very much in concept at the moment, they've said. Uh, so like I said, it'd be nice to see pick up those pictures or at least lean down and zoom in maybe look at them who's this bath attendant I'd hate to be corded back here in such a cramped cubby the walls bearing down on you like all the troubles hopes and deepest desires you dare not dwell upon he doesn't like tight spaces but he's a border ship like this okay um so the multiplayer mode supposedly will have two kind of sub modes to it and a nice is... Arabian motif with cooling colours as passengers relax after their time in the baths. But what a poor state these workers left it in. I don't know, it seems alright. There's, what, a couple of things on the floor? That's about it. This is... oh, it's just a locker. So again, in the story mode, I'd imagine we can kind of pick up somebody's... There'll be information knocking around. We can pick up stuff. That may be one of the developers, possibly. Um, yeah, so from lockers, I'd imagine we can pick up clues or something like that in story mode. So the multiplayer mode, there's supposedly going to be a what was it, a voyage mode or something, where we can basically, you know, over the course of the the few days running up to the iceberg, we can play deck games and just wander around the ship with people. Or there's the multiplayer mode where you can actually uh, go down with the ship and maybe rescue passengers because I mean that that's another thing in the kind of story mode it's hinted at obviously you've got to track down the criminals but you can also maybe take a different route and just try and save your own skin or rescue people electric bath Earth is that lucky dog testing out the electric bath and I believe I see a sliver of the plunge bath as well we can just about make out there's somebody in there it just looks like a weird oxygen chamber, and that's supposed to leave the plunge pool. Right, okay. So, this is one of those games, I'm not sure whether the developer's ambition is exceeding their reach. Because obviously, as I said, it's been in development for a while. They di obviously didn't hit their um, kickstart, well, Indiegogo goals. Uh, let's go this way. This is glorious. You can near well see half the length of the ship in this corridor. Uh, let's run down here then. This is a long way. Oh, we've got stairs. What's down here? This is... Oh, third class dining room. F deck. I, th I thought that was supposed to be a mirror there for a moment. No, it's a bulkhead. Right. A stark contrast from the first class accommodations, I should say, but still a major improvement from the other liners I've inspected. In all honesty, I envy these people in the lower class. The world is open to them. They move to America and build their future how they choose. They could be loggers, for example. But father wanted me to be a surveyor like he and his father. No logging for you, Robin. Now wash your ears. Mm. Okay, this guy has issues. But no, I'm, I'm trying to zoom in and see, you know, there is a good qual degree of quality to the textures. I mean, like I said, you probably won't be able to see it so much on the YouTube video, but we can see the dimples in the the skin of the hull, and it is reflecting with the, the lighting from the Unreal Engine. Um, some stuff is, a, you know, hard edges on that don't blend quite well. But there are nice touches, and it isn't a visually nice representation. But the the drawback of, you know, having a pretty looking game, 
certainly in this very early stage is it does suffer with you know the optimization this game you're going to need a beast of a machine to run it at you know the higher resolutions and higher qualities at least in its current state anyway this is maybe as i said I, i'm not sure how well this is going to run on uh, vr rigs because the the frame rate is all over the place they've, they've certainly got to kind of nail down the, the balance between quality and optimization of the, the frame rate musicians engineers steward uh, so hopefully in the the final game we can actually you know go and poke around in lots of people's rooms you know i'd imagine kind of crew quarters we'd be able to try and get access to but passengers quarters we'd have to get specific keys and all that kind of thing so if this is turns into a, a, a good murder mystery type game there will be a lot of you know, hunt, hunting for keys hunting for clues all that kind of thing and that's yeah this is where we came in what was that crew dormitory Ironically referred to as glory holes. No, not going to go there. Um, so what? Oh, is that an open door there? This is boiler room six. Oh dear, the door is open. Perhaps I'm not supposed to look in here, but I can't pass up this opportunity for a little adventure. Oh, if Claire were here now to see me being so daring. How by Edward did I get myself here? No, nope, can't go any Quite higher. Too high, I think. No, Robin, it's not your time to get your angel wings just yet. Right. No. Down we go. Just yet. Whee! He d does ladders quickly, but the rest of the walking around is pretty slow. It's quite hot here. Well, we are in the boiler room. What do you expect? Well, I suppose they're likely firing up the other boiler rooms. So, we've got paint, we've got boilers. Let's see how low we can go. Whether we can get right into the bowels of the ship. So, like I said, this is way beyond where I, I'd got to, so... No, we can't seem to go any further down. I'm trying to negotiate this ladder. No, won't let me. Is there another ladder on this side we can maybe get down? Whee! Oh, there we go. These machines are massive. 29 on board, propelling the ship through the water like an untamed beast. Oh, that, the the cold doesn't look too bad. Performance during the sea trial shortly. Finally free and not held back from anything. Okay. Just a tundra in sight. Just freedom. So that's why we can get down that set of ladders, because we're obviously not allowed over there, because they've put a big bucket in the way for this way, so yeah. Alright, so let's carry along the, what was it, Scotland Road. Uh, and let's see what else the ship has. So, obviously it's difficult to come up with a solid first impressions on a demo this early. But then again, as I said, the game has been in production for a while, so this is obviously a fairly decent representation of where they're at. Uh, no, this is box stop. This open space looks like a fine spot for gathering and mingling between all parts of Europe as they make their journey across the pond to the new world. So we can't go. Perhaps a place on the west coast, like, like Seattle. See, like I told you, he's obsessed with Seattle. Um, we're not going to go see any boxing. So where are we going to next? Because we've done pretty much the length and breadth of the ship. Unless we can go up and something else is activated now. But I've got a feeling this may be the extent of the demo. Because I can't say I saw any other open doors. So my thoughts on the game so far. As I say, it is just a demo. So I can't really give full judgment but it's very pretty it'd be nice to see what they're actually planning with the kind of story elements of the game um, but it's very hard to tell um, 
I can't use these elevators to... No, we're not going to go any higher. Can't use any of these doors. Nope. The McGuffs. Margaret Brown, also known as the Insinkable Molly Brown. So, yeah. I can't see Kate Winslet or uh, DiCaprio anywhere. So, I think this may actually be the, the extent of the demo. So, I can't say I've seen anything else that may be a different pathway out. Through these doors, first class passengers boarded the Titanic at Southampton. These doors were ordered open by the second officer, Light Toller, during the sinking with the intention of loading lifeboats through them. However, no lifeboats rode to them. Okay. Well, it's very dark over here, so I'm just stumbling around in the dark. No, nothing. I think, as I say, we're pretty at much at the end of the demo. As far as I can tell, there may be more stuff that I'm I'm missing. Um, if you've played it, no, we're back, back to the start, aren't we? Yeah, this is where we came in. Okay, so yes, this is Titanic: Honor and Glory. Um, like I said, the the demo is freely available. If you want to go to their website, I will leave a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. And as I said, there there's this version which is for just regular PC or there is a VR version which you can check out if you do have a Vive or a Rift. French tapestry woven by a busson for the White Star Liner based on the Chase de Gaulle series. Okay. But yeah, I think there's not a lot else to see. We've been up, we've been down. I think that's about it. So like I said, it'd be nice to know more about the game and actually see more than just a very sli thin sliver of what the ship has in store to actually see what some of the actual gameplay mechanics might be you know actually hunting for clues talking with people even if, even if there was just one person you know doing a bit of painting actually wander up to them and actually talk to them or something like that but this is i'd say a very nice looking tech demo as it stands but there's there's not a lot to this considering there's you know at least two years worth of work gone into this well more than because obviously the indiegogo was back in january february 2015 and that was for the later stages of the game's development so like i said this game has been in the works for a while and other than being a very nicely modeled ship there isn't a lot to show for the work um but it, as i said it's something you can kind of make your own opinions on uh, because the demo is available as as always i will leave a link in the description below so you can check out all the information for yourself and if you enjoyed this kind of li little foray into titanic honor and glory uh, you know what to do hit that like button uh, if you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments below what you think. And, you know, if you think it might be something your friends might like, or if you think the channel might be something your friends might like, obviously share the videos with your friends on any of the social medias and where you can also get in touch with us over at the Killer Bits. And until next time, guys, I'm just going to see if there's anything else in the boat. Locations in the di this direction included alternate first and second class cabins and the second class st staircase. So yeah, we've seen a bit of first class, we've seen a bit of third class, nothing of second class. Nothing in the hold, no access to the crew quarters. So yeah. Alright, well this has been Titanic Honor and Glory. I've been John and I will catch you next time. Alright, bye! Bye. <laughs>